Thank you, and uh, I'm the final speaker, and uh, what I will try to do is to summarize some of the symptom issues that arise in melanoma, and how do you cope with them, manage them, and deal with your day-to-day -day issues. All of us have to understand that melanoma may occur in a healthy patient, or it may occur in a patient who has other medical issues. And how do we co-manage all these issues while dealing with the primary illness, which may have an effect on the function, on the appearance, and on the day-to-day -day life of a human being and their families? Increasingly, we have realized that family-centered and patient-centered care is what makes a difference in cancer care. A patient cannot be removed from their environment and treated just as a single identity or entity. So it's kind of treatment by a team, and we use a team approach in supportive oncology, and that is a concept that's evolving, and that is a concept one would like to use for all medical issues, including melanoma. So what are the common symptoms we may see? Overall, globally, it's tough to judge which symptom is common, but there are different symptoms at different stages of the illness. For example, on presentation, there are different issues. There are emotional issues, dealing and coping with the new information and what is happening with you, your body, and the future. So we try to deal with those in a team fashion. The assessment of the illness or the underlying melanoma, the evaluation and the management plan is done by the melanoma experts like Dr. Pavlik and her team. But what follows is that you may have issues related to the primary illness, issues related to the treatment, or issues related to the spread or surgery, and so on and so forth. We just heard about the lymphedema treatment, and that's just one aspect of it. We heard about the cognition and coping issues that is a secondary form of treatment. So all these things come into play, and we have supportive role of different team members that commit. So as you see, this slide shows you that a patient cannot be managed in isolation. A patient is part of a family. Family could be two people, three people, extended family, your neighbors, the building in which you live. But there are people who are out there who are looking out for you, and they need to help, and they want to know, and they want to do the best that they can so that the outcome is good. I won't talk about the stages of melanoma because that's not in my domain, but just so we know that the management, the symptoms are directly related to the extent of the melanoma and the spread of the melanoma. Obviously, the higher the stage, the more extensive the treatment would be and the more loss of function or loss of cosmetic appearance or pain issues will be there. So the location also determines a lot. For example, you could have melanoma of the eye or a nail or any part of the body. The human skin is the biggest organ that we know of. If you spread it out, it's huge. And a melanoma could be one millimeter or two millimeter in appearance, but it could have profound effects on your body. So it is extremely important that everybody look at the bodies carefully. You could do a self-examination and evaluation and if you find a spot that doesn't belong there, you can always seek you know, medical care for that or an evaluation. There are skin evaluations or screening for melanomas, and these are conducted regularly. And it's very important as the summer months come in that we pay extra attention to these spots in our body. So the melanoma symptoms may be related to the primary lesion and the location of the tumor or the location of the melanoma would determine what is the outcome. Then there may be the effects of surgery, whether it's the eye or the foot or a toe or a limb or a face, or sometimes there may be amputation issues, a loss of a limb or loss of a toe, and one has to manage that. Then we have to deal with the effects of treatment, whether it's chemotherapy or radiation, and there are some side effects related to that. Over the past 20 or 30 years, there are many, many advances and things are better tolerated, the chemotherapeutic agents have improved, the immunotherapies have improved, and overall, the tolerance of the human body towards all these treatments has improved. 
Plus, we also have other medications that manage the symptoms, and we are able to do this better. So overall, the end point is that the burden of symptoms is significantly lower now than what it used to be, or they're being managed in a better fashion. The effects of metastatic lesion, for example, the lymphedema, as we talked about, could be one of the issues that comes up. So let's talk about a couple of issues that you may have. For example, a patient can have a local spread to the skin or a lymph node, and surgical treatment may be planned for that. There may be involvement of the liver. They may be spread to bone or brain, and they may be symptoms related to tissues involved. For example, there may be no other change except somebody gets confused and the workup reveals that there is involvement of the brain. Sometimes the primary melanoma may not even be recognized, but because of the evaluation that comes to play. So for pain management, which is the heart and soul of medical care in this day and age, it's called the fifth vital sign we use a WHO ladder. The World Health Organization defined this, and basically it's step one, step two, and step three. Step one is mild pain. This means that people can get aspirin, Tylenol, Advils, anything over the counter for that. This is what everybody takes for a headache, or a sinus, or a leg ache, or a backache, things like that. Common things without prescription, you get them over the counter. Level two, or the step two, is moderate pain, and that can be managed with Tylenol combinations. Tylenol with codeine is a weak analgesic, but has a lot of side effects. There are better drugs, for example, the Percocet, which is a combination of oxycodone and Tylenol. You have combination of um, codeine that we said is not that great, but there are some other adjuvants that can be used. Tramadol is a weaker, synthetic morphine-like compound, and it works well. It's called Ultram. It comes in plain Ultram, or it can come in Ultraset, which is a combination with Tylenol, and this is the lowest level of morphine-like compound that you can use with good analgesic properties. So these are all oral drugs, and they can be given in a step two fashion. Step three is when there's severe pain, for example, someone who's post-operative phase in the hospital. They may require IV medication. And for this, we have drugs like morphine, drugs like hydromorphone or dilaudid. Or we have methadone for very severe pain. We have lororphanol. We have fentanyl, which comes in a patch. Or it can come in a lollipop for short-acting phases. Or it can be given as an infusion for short-term purposes. Then we have oxycodone, which is given PO, there is no IV form of oxycodone available. And then we can use adjuvants, for example, the injectable medications like Toradol, which is, a more, which is an Advil-like compound that can be given IV. Or we can use other anesthetic agents or other stronger form of medications, but pain management is available to you, and all you have to do is ask and bring it to our, in, our knowledge, once we know, we're able to manage it. If we don't know about it, then we can't do much about it. So nausea and vomiting may be related to post-op phases sometimes, or it may be related to the chemotherapy or the treatment you're receiving. The symptoms need to be assessed. The duration of symptoms is important. And while this is going on, we are managing the nausea and vomiting, what is happening is that the patient may not be eating. So attention to nutrition is very important. So this is where the nutritionist comes in. We don't want to wait till a person has lost a lot of weight. We try to do this preemptively and try to preserve the ideal body weight, whatever that may be for that person. And this is very, very important. Along with that, hydration. If somebody isn't able to keep fluids down, all it may take is a day or two for that person to get dehydrated. And with the temperatures going up and when the heat comes in, we need to make sure that the person or the patient is taking adequate amounts of fluids and calories as well. The different medications to control the nausea and vomiting, simple drugs like Reglan, simple drugs like Compazine, which can be given orally or rectal suppositories, and then you have the higher level of drugs like Zofran, 
which can be given as a sublingual form or IV form. And then we have patches like the Sancusa patch, which lasts for a week. So there is a whole uh, pharmacopoeia of different drugs that can be provided to manage these symptoms. So nobody should be suffering in silence if you have these issues related to the primary illness or the medications or treatment that you're receiving. Sometimes uh, when a person is bedbound, it has been shown that with each day of bed rest, we lose 3% of our muscle strength and body function. So if a healthy adult loses 3% on a daily basis, very quickly they would lose a lot of function. So it's very important to keep your activity going. There are very few conditions that require full bed rest, and the ones that do, the doctor will tell you so, but otherwise, early ambulation, walking, staying active is good for your health and good for rehabilitation and trying to keep your functional status good. Being bed-bound or chair-bound isn't healthy because it can lead to other issues like clots in the legs or DVT and complications related to that. So early mobility, trying to do your daily activities and being up and about is the best thing that one can do in order to preserve the muscle function. Then fatigue comes in a lot in cancer care or in melanoma care, and there are many causes of fatigue. What we look at is what is reversible. Is there anemia? Is the nutrition good? Is the blood pressure stable? Are you taking any medication that is causing fatigue? Or last but not least, have things progressed to a point where we need to check you out or think, you know, work up the kidney function, the liver function, the lab work, and look at all those things. So onco rehab is actually a specialty. It's physiatry or physical medicine and rehab, and they work very closely with oncology as part of the supportive team. And we have physicians from Rust that work very closely with us. And the idea is not to wait till you lose function, but to preserve the function right from the get-go. Depression and anxiety are common with cancer, and melanoma is no different. So assessment and understanding what are the factors it may be related to the disease, or depression may be a pre-existing condition. So this needs to be understood because the current condition or a new diagnosis will not make that better. So the patient has to continue to take treatment, get assessed frequently, and ma get managed either by the primary physician or the primary psychiatrist or in a team fashion again. Multimorbidity is a term that is being used increasingly in medicine now. For example, uh, patients are living longer. The population is living longer. The mean survival now is 83.6 years, which is or 84 years. So anyone born today is expected to live to 100. One in three people is expected to live to 100 years. So life expectancy is long. Along with that comes, uh, comes in other issues that are related to the medical care. For example, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, other conditions are there. So they need to be co-managed. Assessment and treatment of that has to occur side by side while melanoma is being managed. So close relationship with the internist or primary care physician is something that needs to be maintained while you're undergoing treatment and in later phases as well. We call this medicine as a team sport, and it's not team sport in the sense that we play, but increasingly it has been found that in isolation we cannot provide effective medical care. We all have to team up and work together, and that's what we do. For example, we have onco rehab, we have nutrition, we have social work, we have cognitive evaluation that Dr. Langer just spoke about. So we have the whole team trying to help and work a patient and help them improve. It's a holistic approach looking at all avenues and aspects of care. There's palliative for pain and symptom management. There's psychiatry for supportive counseling as needed. There's physiatry for onco rehab. The social worker will help you deal with financial issues or insurance issues or transport arrangements and things like that. The nutritionist is excellent in telling you what medications and drugs and interactions and nausea vomiting symptoms end up doing to your body and how you can cope with them. 
Nurses and nurse practitioners are an important part of armamentarium, and all of us work together in a team. Nothing would be complete without saying that prevention is important, and prevention of skin issues is extremely important. As the temperatures will soar, protection of skin is important, and even if the primary lesion is taken care of, one has to be aware that a skin that is prone to these issues or skin cancer issues needs to be protected at all times. I will stop here and at the end if there are any questions, but try to stress a couple of things that the symptoms may be multimodality, different in nature. They may be physical, they may be cognitive, they may be psychological, or they may be functional. But we in support of oncology try to co-manage the symptoms try to provide you one-stop shopping. And if there are any questions, we'll take those. But we are available. The numbers are here. I think it's in your folder. If you have any questions, we'll deal with them. But in general, I think coping and all of that, this is a long-term planning. These are issues that go on for a long time. So I'm going to stop here. And if there are any questions, we'll take them. Thank you.